Father Lord, we bless you, we give you all the we give you all the honor. We thank you. Bless your holy name. For your mercies. Oh, Catholic, for his goodness, for his mercies. He's a good God. Father, we thank you. Father, we worship you. We adore you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. So, good evening, sisters. Good evening. Good evening. Tonight, you're welcome to the Lord's Prayer School. I am standing in for anti FA tonight. And I believe the Lord will speak to us. Mm. Thank the leadership for this opportunity. And we've been learning a lot. I mean, the Lord has been teaching us a lot. I, for one, have had my life transformed, my prayer life transformed because of the teachings that we have received in the Lord's Prayer School. It's been an amazing journey. We've learned so much, so much, so much right mm -hmm. from the beginning where Father has taught us how to pray, praying according to his will. He's taught us having faith, why we should have faith and how it is important to, to have faith so that our prayers are answered, how it is important also to pray according to his will so that our prayers are answered. And last week, we also listened to the session which spoke to the fact that worship should not only be done, you know, we should not just rush through worship, but we learned why we should worship and why worship is very important and very vital to prayer. And tonight, the Lord is leading us and he wants to speak to us tonight on the reason why we should pray. Why should we pray? Why should we pray? Why should we pray? Have you noticed that for most churches, I cannot speak for all churches, but for most churches, the prayer meetings are the least attended meetings. Mm -hmm. For most churches, I don't know about your church, <laughs> mm -hmm. but for a lot of churches that I know, the prayer meeting is the least attended meeting in the church. Mm -hmm. If there is some concert or movie night or whatever, it seems to have a lot more people than when prayer is called. Have you also noticed that pattern where even though people have churches, we find people gravitating towards certain churches on certain days for prayer meetings. Now, why is that so? Why do people move to go pray in a certain place? Could it be because they believe that their, the prayers are answered or prayers are answered when they gravitate towards a certain place or in a certain church or in a certain atmosphere in a certain setting? That is when prayer is answered. And we see that happen a lot. Now, Jesus answers this question that I ask, why must we pray? In the book of Luke chapter 18, verse one. And I highly recommend that you get your Bible, you open and you read for yourself so that the word enters, you see the word. So it's not as though it's only my Bible. It's in your Bible too. So Luke chapter 18, verse one. Please, anybody who opens it can read it for us. Sister AC, are you able to read, please? Since you're already unmuted. I am in a position to read, please. Yeah, okay, I haven't got into the place yet. All right. So Luke chapter 18, verse 1, please. God bless you. <clears throat> Eighteen verse one. From verse yes. one. Yes, verse one. Mm. When Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. That's yes. verse one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes please. All right. Now there are so many reasons why we need to pray, 
but today we'll touch on only one. And hopefully when given another opportunity, we can continue or the Lord will teach us as we, we continue this school. Now, Jesus said that men ought to pray. All right. Ought means they must. That means it's requisite that men pray. It is by force that men pray. It is necessary for men to pray and not faint and not give up. And with this scripture, I see that the Lord is showing us that, you know, most of the time, if you see prayer, one might think that the opposite of prayer should be prayerlessness. Okay. But look at how Jesus contrasts prayer and fainting. So Jesus is saying in this scripture that when we do not pray, we have the propensity to be tired, weary, lacking in energy, give up. And it's so easy for us to give up hope in God and lose our faith when we do not pray. Now, isn't it interesting that the parable that continues is speaking to or speaks about a widow who goes to a judge, mm -hmm. you know, in the bed to get justice. Mm -hmm. And the more she goes, the more the judge says, I know what, I have to just listen to this woman because she might just wear me out. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting because I realized that the more she prayed, quote unquote, the more strength she got to keep praying. Now, there are times where I've heard people say that I, I, I am tired of praying. I have been praying about this. I'm not seeing results, so I am tired of praying. But I realized that if indeed you were praying, you wouldn't have been tired. Because Jesus is saying that when we keep praying, we do not faint. And the reason why we have to keep praying is so that we do not faint. It's a very interesting, <laughs> when we pray, Okay, the more we pray, the more strength we receive not to faint. And then he tells us that keep praying. Do not get tired of praying because as you pray, you receive the strength that you need that will keep you praying to get the answer. Now, when we look at Isaiah chapter 40, starting from verse 29. Maybe I'll read that. Mm -hmm. The passage again, please. Isaiah chapter 40. Mm. Isaiah chapter 40. Mm. Maybe we should read from verse 28 to 31. Anybody who is there can read it for us, please. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 31. Isaiah 40, from verse 28 to 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Amen. 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 So we see in the scripture that it is it is almost normal let me just say that for lack of better words for young men to grow tired for us mm. to feel and be weary but it says that he is the one who gives strength to the weak mm. and even if you are youth you can faint and be weary and as a young man you can utterly fall but it mm. is those who wait on the lord who renew their strength mm. and the bible says they 
mount up with wings like eagle, they run and they are not weary, they walk and do not faint. Now, why is this so? The Lord took me back to Genesis. In mm. Genesis, that's in creation. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, where it speaks about creation. Okay, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Maybe I'll just read that. Father, thank you. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Let me do it. Or Amplified. I'm reading from Amplified Classic. Then the Lord found man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath or spirit of life. And man became a living being. Other version says a living soul. It says, and God created man. He formed him from the dust of the ground. So he molded the body from the dust of the ground. And then he breathed into man the breath of life, which is the spirit of God, which translates to neshama. That's the Greek word or the, the Hebrew word neshama, which means the breath of God. And in Job chapter 32, verse 8, we see Job speak to this when he says that there's a spirit in man, the breath of the most high, that gives him understanding. So God created man, body, soul, spirit. Or God created man as a spirit that has a soul and lives in the body. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7, the Bible says that to dust, the dust will return to the earth and the spirit to God. So we see distinctly how God, is, God um, separates the spirit, the soul, and the body. Now, I want us to read one more scripture, then we'll speak to this. Now, the point that Father was teaching me, and we are learning tonight, is that he created man as a spirit with a soul that lives in the body. And he created man to have fellowship with him, God. Mm. All right? We are going somewhere. He created man to have fellowship with him, God. And Jesus teaches us, in John chapter four, verse 24, that the only way we can worship God, and I remember the day we we're talking about can a busy woman have, um, can, can a busy woman have intimacy with God? We spoke about this scripture, that God has a love language and his love language is spirit and truth. So Jesus was telling us that the only way we can worship God is in spirit and in truth. So when God created man, he created man as a living spirit, which had a soul lived in a body. And this spirit had connection or had fellowship with God. This spirit was the only way that man, God could interact with man. All right. He could interact with us through the spirit. Now, when Adam fell from grace, that is why God says that the day that you eat this fruit, you shall die. The death was not the death of his physical body, even though eventually his physical body died as a result of the sin. But the death was a separation from God. Mm. Now that means that the natural habitat of man, which is the spirit of man, was the presence of God. Just like fish is made for the water, and then the plant is made for the soil. So mm. once you uproot the plant from the soil, and once you take the fish away from the water, then it is dead. Mm. All right? So once mm. the spirit of man was uprooted from the presence of God, from his habitat, that is why man, now the Bible says that he said, the day you eat this fruit, you shall die. And it says the soul that sin shall die. So man now received death instead of life. And you know that God said that they should yes. so that they do not eat the tree of life, which was in the center of the garden. All right? Because God did not want man to continually or perpetually live. God did not want to perpetually live in this Stacey, please, I'm making you um, a co-host so that you can help me mute, please. Thank you very much. All right. 
So once the spirit of man left the presence of God, that is when man died, or God said that man, now you are dead because your spirit left his presence, which was his natural habitat. So sometimes if you approach a tree, you might still see the leaves as green, all right? Mm. But it is dead. Mm. You might still see the leaves as green, but it is dead. Now, the reason why we do faint, the reason why we get weary, the reason why we give up, the reason why in the Azar 40 scripture that we're reading, they saw, says that um, the youth grow weary and they utterly fall and all that. It's because now there is the soul, there's the spirit. Uh, the, sorry, the soul and the body, which seems to rule when the spirit is not active or the spirit is not alive. Mm. All right. So God created, let me just go over it. God created as a spirit with a soul living in a body. The spirit was created by God, which was the breath of God, through which God is able to have fellowship with man interact with man and jesus also said the only way we can worship god is in spirit and in truth now when man fell the man became a soulish flesh fleshly being <laughs> a soulish fleshly being ignoring the spirit and the promptings of the spirit now the spirit is like a radio that if properly tuned, is able to receive the frequencies and then the waves of the spirit. All right. And this is how Jesus lived. Let's look at the life of Jesus. So Jesus said that what, what I see my father do, that is what I do. And my father has taught me what to say and how to speak. So Jesus was like, I see my father, even though he was physically on earth, he was so much in tune in the spirit that he mm. could see his father, he could hear his father. So what his father says is what he says, and what he sees his father do is what he does. Now, this is somebody whose spirit was so alive, in tune with the father, because we see that this is the original arrangement of God. This was the original plan of God, that we are so in tune with him, that man is living this life that we call everlasting life that we are so spiritually inclined that we are not moved by what we see. We are not moved by what we hear. We are not moved by the physical things that surround us. Because those things cause us to faint. Those things cause us to be wary. Those things cause us to give up. But if we are spiritually minded, the Bible says that to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, what has this got to do with prayer? And why must we pray? One of the reasons, and there are many more reasons, as I mentioned earlier, why we need to pray is that as we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, and we see this in John chapter 3, verse 6, which says that that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit. The spirit there was capital S, is spirit small s okay that which is born of spirit is spirit and the bible says that we were not born by the will we did not become saved by the will of man but by the will of god by the spirit of god so when we pray, it is like we're going back to our original design being rooted in god being rooted in our source in our natural habitat it is our spirit connecting to the spirit of God like he had originally designed us to be. Now, without that kind of spiritual connection, without that kind of bond in, in the spirit, without that kind of interaction in the spirit, that is when we are led by the flesh. That is when the soul, which is made up of the mind, the intellect, the emotion, and the will takes over our body. It takes over our life, sorry. And everything that we do in life is kind of ordered by what the soul thinks should be done. That's why we hear say that I feel like, I don't feel like. And you remember that 
Pastor Adeline taught us um, in one of the marriage school about the woman who was standing on the moon. And it was, she was speaking to the fact that without the spirit, you see, and there was also another time we spoke about the spirit control temperament. Without the spirit being active, the spirit being alive, you are so easily, you can easily be swayed by the flesh. You can easily be swayed by, by, by the soul. Oh, what is what I think? This is how I feel. And so I act. You see, that is why God wants our spirit to be built up, our spirit man to be built up. And our spirit man is built up through prayer. As we pray, we connect our spirit, which is our regenerated spirit, born again by the spirit of God, to connect to the spirit of God, to connect to God. Because the Bible says that no man knoweth the man except the spirit which is in that man. You know, there was, there's a scripture that we often quote, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it enter, entered into the heart of man, what God has in store for those who love him, you see. But let's, when you go to the first Corinthians scripture, where it speaks in first Corinthians, because the original was in Azar somewhere, Azar 64, I believe. It points us to the fact that, but the spirit, you see, so formerly we used to just say that, oh, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, what's, and no mind has, has conceived the things that God has prepared for us. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 to 10. The verse 10 says that, but, the things, but these things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. So we've been learning in prayer school that we have to pray or the prayers that we pray have to be prayers that are in line with God's will, okay? We have to pray in accordance to God's will. How do we know God's will? We know God's will. We know God's will by his spirit because the same spirit is saying that what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard as it's been written, what it does, no mind has conceived. Yo, 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 yo. It is saying that those who have the spirit, the spirit of God does this revelation. The spirit of God reveals to us what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what has not entered into the heart of man. So as we pray and as we have fellowship in prayer, we build up our spirit. We are sharpening our spiritual senses so that we can hear what the spirit of God is saying. We can connect with the spirit of our father. And as we see him do, we are able to do. And as we see him, we hear him speak, we are able to speak. All right. This is very important because that's why the Bible says that we should live by the spirit and we shall not gratify the desires of the flesh. That means if you're not somebody who prays, you, you are easily swayed by the flesh. If you're not somebody who prays, you are easily moved by the flesh. If you're not somebody who prays, you get weary. You can easily give up. You can easily lose heart when you are somebody who does not pray. That is why Jesus, going back to the scripture we read, said that men ought to pray and not faint. You remember he also said that watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. You remember that scripture, right? It's watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray so that you do not fall into temptation. And when he was teaching us to pray, look at how he even taught us to pray. That God's will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That means that my spirit is so in tune, is so aligned to your spirit, that I want what is done in heaven to be the same that is done in earth. 
Now let's go back to the Garden of Eden. The Bible says that after God had created everything, all right, he brought the things to all the animals, sorry, when after God had created the animals, he brought the animals to Adam to name them. This is in Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. The Bible says that he brought them to Adam to see what he will name them. It was not as though God was clueless and God didn't know what to call man. Uh, sorry, call the animals. It was not as though God was confused. But he had made a, a, such a spirit-filled, in-tuned person, almost a clone, that he wanted to see this thing that I have made or this being that I have made, how aligned is he? And the Bible says that whatsoever Adam called it, in the verse 20, Genesis chapter 2, verse 20, that was its name. That means that Adam's spirit was so alive. Adam's, Adam's spirit was so in tune and so aligned to the spirit of God that what God called that thing, that was what he also called it. So it did not matter how the thing looked like. He was so in tune with the spirit of God that he was able to recognize that in the spirit, this is the name. And so that is what I shall call it. And the Bible says that whatever he called it, that was it. Now we also, as we build up our spirit and we have our spirit in tune with that of the father, we are able to call those things that the father calls by the name that the father calls them. You see. So we, we, we do not see that stubborn child but then we see that child who is fearfully and wonderfully made we do not see that difficult marriage we do not see that difficult husband you know as it were we do not see the difficult husband quote unquote as we would put it as it were but we see an anointed blessed man of God. Why? Because our spirit is in tune with the spirit of God. And so Father calls us to pray. The Lord calls us to pray and brings us to the place of prayer so that our spirits are built up and we are able to connect to his spirit. Now in time past, or when I started my journey of prayer, I started praying because I had a need, you see. And because I'm a Christian, I know if you have a need, you should pray. So I started praying and I started going to the place of prayer. But I realized that as I kept going to the place of prayer, I kept having fellowship with the Father. Even though my original intent was well, just to get what I need and leave. <laughs> I found that my spirit started coming alive to the frequencies of the spirit of God. I started becoming more sensitive. I started becoming less wary of my situation, of the situation that I was in, of the challenge that I was in. And I started building strength. There was this supernatural strength that just started building up in me because that is what happens when your spirit is in, in touch with the spirit of God because the flesh will grow weary. The soul will give up. But the spirit that is in touch or aligned to the spirit of God, strength is renewed, mounts up with wings like eagle, runs and is not where walks and does not swim. So I realized that as I got closer to God, as I spent more time with God, as I spent time in fellowship with the Father, with the Spirit of God, I started looking more like God. I started talking more like God. I started seeing more like God. 
I started hearing more like God. Why? Because the spirit of God was drawing, was drawing, was drawing me closer to him. And I realized that the same situations that used to make me faint, the same situation that did not, it did not really change at once. But I found that I had, I was building strength. I was building immunity. And there's a scripture in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14, I believe, which says that the, the, the strong spirit can heal the physical body. So if anybody is sick, even by the strength of their spirit or how alive their spirit is, it's able to give them life on that dead bed and they're able to resurrect from the dead bed. So that means that even if my spirit, or that means that when my spirit is strong, when my spirit is well built, my physical body is able to align. The flesh is able to align. And so Father started drawing me to a place of intimacy and fellowship with him. When now my prayer, my prayer appointments with him when no more, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that. But sometimes I just go and I don't even know what we are going to pray about. But as I worship, then the Holy Spirit gives me things to pray about. Because at that point, that is what is on the Father's heart. And as I kept on doing that, I found out that the Lord was gifting me with discernment. And the Lord was gifting me with a word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Not really because I went asking for the gift, but because I was getting close to him. And so I was able to now download things from the spirit because the spirit was getting, is getting more in tuned with his spirit. I will say I'm still in crutch. Honestly, I'm not saying this to say that <laughs> I'm in university. But it was so interesting that the more I prayed, the more I spent time fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, the more he made my spirit in tune with his spirit. That's why Paul says that we should live by the Spirit. We should live by the Spirit so that we do not gratify the desires of the flesh. We should walk by the spirit. We should walk by the spirit. And so tonight, as I said, there are various reasons why the Lord has taught me to pray, but this is a very, very important reason because I find that sometimes we grow tired of praying because Physically, and let me use that word, it does not look like we have received the reward or the answer to the prayer. But then if our spirits are built up and we walk by faith and not by sight, we will know that as Jesus said, and believe that we have received that which we have asked of the Father. We have it. It is a knowing that is in the spirit. It is a knowing that is in the spirit. All right. Spoken a lot. I'll open the floor for questions and then we can conclude. Hmm. Father, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word that has come to us. All right. So Jesus says that men ought to pray and not faint. Men ought to pray and not faint. Men ought to pray and not faint. Paul said that building up your most holy faith, speak in the language of the spirit. Building up your most holy faith, speak in the language of the spirit. You remember that Paul also said that this our fight is a fight of faith, right? 
It's a fight of faith. And it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And as we speak in the language of the spirit, we edify ourselves and we build up our most holy faith. Without this faith, we are not able to please God. He says, for whoever comes to him must first believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So all the prayer that we are praying, and we have learned this in time past in prayer school, without faith, the prayers are not going to be answered. And how do we build the faith? We build it through the word. We build it through the spirit as we speak in the language of the spirit and as we absorb the word of God and the word becomes flesh. That is when our faith is built up. So there are times that we go into prayer and we spend time in prayer. And physically, let me say it again. It might look that they're like the answer they didn't just, it has not shown up. It has not, but your faith is being built. Your faith is being built. That faith that moves mountains because you know that situation is a mountain. And it looks like it is so difficult and it looks like it's so challenging. It looks like this thing is insurmountable. It looks like it's an impossible situation. But as you keep praying, as you keep having fellowship with the Father, as you keep building up your spirit so that you are not moved by the flesh, that you are not moved by the soul, by the will, by I feel, I felt, but it is rather by the spirit. That is when you are able to stand your ground. Paul says, doing all to stand, stand. You are able to stand because you see the situation like God sees it. I mean, in recent times, I've had times where I have been offended. Or it, it looked like some situation was really, really very offensive. You know, it was so offensive. But by the spirit, the Lord showed me that, hey, look beyond the offense. Don't look at the offense. This is the root cause of the thing. Deal with it. It is, against, it is coming against your faith. It is coming against your, 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 your happiness, your joy. Let me use joy rather. You see. So physically, my, my soul, I could have said, oh, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel. But in the place of the spirit, the Holy Spirit was able to direct me and show me the root cause that you see what this person is doing. This is why the person is doing what they are doing. So pray. And as I prayed, the Lord revealed deeper things to me and I was able to meet with the person. And previously, when we were, we were fully flesh, fully, there is no way we would have seen beyond the offense at all. At all. We would not have seen beyond the offense. You see. But the Holy Spirit was teaching me that, no, don't look at the offense. Don't look at what the person is doing. See beyond the offense. In recent times, I've, had, I've come into contact with a few I've come into contact with a few people and one of the ladies that I, I came into contact with had some marital issues and as we prayed in the language of the spirit the Lord revealed to us that look if you are not spirit led you might just deal with it that when he's doing this and he's doing that but the Holy Spirit revealed to us that he has been poisoned and the wife said, it is true. Because there was a day I was asleep and I woke up and I panicked. Me, I'm shaming. And I was like, hmm, my husband has been poisoned. He had been spiritually poisoned. So all the things he was doing physically, all right, if you are not in tune with the spirit, if you are not somebody who is in tune with the spirit, 
you would deal with it on the surface. God, change him more, change him more, change him more. But the person has been poisoned. And so the Holy Spirit reveals to us, and then we know how to address it because we've been able to buy into the mind of God, see with the eyes of God. So we're able to decipher the issue, what is happening in there. We are able to, to divide, rightly divide that, oh, this one is not him. There's something happening in the background. But if we are not spiritual, we might deal with things in the flesh and then we faint because it looks like we are not getting the answers to the things. so father is calling us to a deeper place of prayer not just because we have certain prayer topics because you realize that her prayer topic was father change my husband but the real prayer topic was eject this poison and draw him to you and let him fulfill your purpose and your assignment for his life. You see, the fleshly soulish prayer would have been like, change him so that he makes me happy. So that I am happy. But by the spirit, we found out that it was deeper than that. It was deeper than that. It was deeper than that. So God is calling us. And telling us tonight that he created us as a spirit with a soul living in a body. And he created us to have fellowship and intimacy with him. And this fellowship and intimacy is only done by the spirit. Because worship can only be done by spirit. And as we spend time with him in prayer. And I highly recommend you speak a lot in the language of the spirit. As we speak in the language of the spirit, we speak in the language of the spirit. Have you realized there are times you speak in the language of the spirit, you go in a place of prayer, you were heavy, you were burdened. You couldn't really tell why you were praying or what the burden was. But as you spoke in the language of the spirit, you find out that you, you get this relief, you get this rest, you get this peace. You get this peace as, as you go into the presence of God. You get this peace. You get this rest. All right. And that is the work that God wants to do in us so that we are so in tune with his spirit. So that we are in tune with his spirit. We are able to say your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So this is what the Lord has been teaching me. And tonight, I believe he led me to share this. That he's calling us to that deeper place of intimacy with him. That deeper place of intimacy with him. He's calling us to that deeper place of intimacy with him. Where we are able to see as he sees. We are able to hear as he hears. We are able to follow his leading. And we are not just moving by what our flesh says. He says the works of the flesh is obvious. That one is very obvious. But the fruit of the spirit. He's calling us to walk by the spirit. And as he draws us into prayer, Father is able to now release giftings. He's able to release assignments. He's able to release his passion, his burden in our hearts. So the next time we go into prayer, let's not be in a hurry and so quick to present our prayer topic. But let us rather be in tune with the spirit and say, spirit of the living God, what are we praying about? Spirit of the living God, what, what is on your heart? What is your will? At this moment, what do you want us to pray about? 
And you'll be so surprised at revelation, the depth, the insights that he will give you. And because the spirit of God searches the mind of God and the will of God, all right, he will be able to show you the deep things of God. And then you realize that your prayers start getting answered. Your prayers are deeper. They are deeper than the selfish prayers. They are deeper. And you start getting deeper revelations and deeper answers and greater answers to prayers. Because now we are speaking what the Father wants. We are seeing with the eyes of the Father, hearing with the, with the ears of the Father. Now I have a question here. Well, we have a few minutes. Okay, so I'll read. Okay, I have two questions actually. Hmm. Father help us. Please, what about those of us who don't speak in the language of the spirit? I've been praying about it and honestly, I get discouraged sometimes. That's the first one. And then another sister is saying that when I pray, I feel his presence. So I run away from prayer because I feel he will manifest. Okay. <laughs> Interesting questions. Now the first one. Hmm. Sister Lena, would you, would you like to help us with the first question? Uh, Auntie Efe, if you're able to speak. She's saying that she gets discouraged because just as I've been speaking about praying in the spirit, she does not pray, pray in the spirit and she has been asking, but she doesn't seem to receive the gift of praying in the language of the spirit. So the floor is open. Sister Lena, are you able to speak? Or Auntie Efe? If not. Um, okay. okay. I, I lost you for a few moments. I'm not sure why you would like me to speak. Please help. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Please. There's a question on board. And the question is that she says a sister wants to know how she can receive the gift of speaking in tongues because she has been asking, but she's not receiving. And she's discouraged. Oh, 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 my sister. I know that journey can be, but it's not supposed to be. Huh. How do we do that? It's, it is actually done just with the same simplicity of faith that we received salvation. What do I mean? You see, when, when we received salvation, he said that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now, the gospel was explained to us and so on and so forth. And then we believed. When we believed for some of us, or maybe, you know, for many of us, perhaps you prayed or one way or the other, you spoke to the Lord, Father, forgive me. And, you know, I believe whatever you said to the Lord. By the time you closed your eyes and you opened your eyes, you did not feel any different. Many of us, some may have, some may have, you know, the experiences are different. Somebody's salvation is so dramatic that yours, you are not sure what or what, but it's not based on drama and it's not based on feelings. So you simply believed. You closed your eyes, you opened your eyes and said, oh, congratulations. You are now a, a child of God. And yet nothing seems to be different. That same simplicity of faith, that he said it, you, you heard it, you believe it, it's true. You are now a child of God. You are now born again. That's it. You don't feel it. You don't see it. It's not an issue he will bring it to pass along the road. That same way, when you read the scriptures and you see that the scriptures promise you that the gift, the promise of the Father, that is the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is unto you, unto your children, unto those who are afar off, 
everyone whom the Lord your God shall call, which means, and that's why you've been asking for it, it belongs to you. You would also see in the Acts chapter two that he says, they began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Sometimes we have maybe thought that the Holy Spirit will begin to speak as he provides utterance. No, it's not the Holy Spirit will begin to speak. You will begin to speak. The Holy Spirit will not cause you to go into a coma and then you don't know you were talking. You only, you know, open your eyes and you are told, hey, you were speaking in tongues. That's not how it happens. An example that the Lord gave me is, he said, you see, some of us, I mean, in playing with children, babies. You hold the baby in your arms and you are speaking what appears to be nonsense. How much do you stretch your thinking abilities? How much do you stretch yourself to speak that language with the child? Do you actually try to figure out what you are going to say next and what you are going to say next? Hardly do we do that. When you are doing that with a baby, whatever you are saying, you don't think, you just speak. It's exactly that same process. It's exactly like that. So all the expectations of the Holy Spirit is going to somersault you or something and he is going to speak and all of those things have sometimes blocked some of us. And so we have not spoken and yet he's in us and you, you must speak and you can speak. So sometimes he's, he's said that if you know how to speak to a baby, just speak like that, as if, and don't think what you are going to say because I am responsible for what you are going to say. You are responsible for speaking. So even if it sounds whatever it sounds, that's not your cup of tea. Your position is just like that adult holding the child. You just speak. Whatever comes out of your mouth has come out of your mouth. That is one. Also understanding that you are not qualified to assess whether the tongues you are speaking, is this the correct tongues? How will you know? Do you understand? There's nothing like that. So there are some who have been enabled to speak, but they stopped because they feel, hey, that's what this tongues is. It tongues, please. It's not your place. It's not my place. Is it tongues there? As he gives utterance, so whether it is one syllable, hundred syllables, or whatever, you just speak. Go ahead and speak. That is the work of believing him. Another person may say that, hey, maybe is it even the Holy Spirit? Who knows? Maybe some demon be, you know, you never know. And I don't want to be, you, I'm not sure. Is it my own spirit? Is my, no, no. Our Heavenly Father said that if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Now, ask yourself a question. If God gives me a guarantee like this, do you think when I ask him, Satan or any of his demons can pass between the legs of my father and come and give me something? It's not going to happen. Me, my father, it's not going to happen. So when I ask him and I begin to speak as he gives me utterance, no demon in hell or heaven is anywhere able to, to enable me to speak because they cannot he has given me his word that he will ensure it is the Holy Spirit that's working with me. So I'm fine. Okay. So if we clear our minds of all of those challenges and, you know, um, stuff, many times we are able to step forward believing the simple believing and, and receiving and just, just speak. If you ask any who speak in tongues, ask them, do you know what you are going to say before you say it? None. From the first time you start speaking in tongues to the final breath of tongues when you are going to heaven, you will not know what you are going to say. You just open your mouth and start talking just like we talk to babies. That's how he does it. 
So if you are willing to be as foolish as that, if you are willing to be as simple as that, because sometimes it appears too simple, but if you are willing like a child, if you are willing like a child, he is more than willing because the promise of the Father is unto us each of us. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not a gift reserved for some. He said it is for you, for your children, for all those who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. You are only disqualified if he has not called you. But if he has called you his own and calls you a child of God, then the gift is yours. So it's not a qualification. You, know, you don't need any further qualification, but rather to believe him and to just talk. You don't figure out what I'm going to say in advance. And you just speak and give him thanks and keep speaking and keep speaking, and keep speaking. Whatever comes out is his cup of tea. And you would realize that it builds faith. It is a work of faith. You yourself, you are wondering, hey, so exactly what am I saying? You, you forget it and move on. Keep speaking, keep speaking, keep speaking. That's how it is. I trust that by the spirit of God, if you are here, if, if you understand by God's grace what I have said, if you are willing to do that now, like a child, because if I were teaching my six-year-old or my five-year-old or my eight-year-old or any of those ages this, having explained it, if they understood it, they will speak in tongues on the instant. If you are ready, if you are willing, you can do that now. I'll just ask if you take a moment, I'm going to ask the father that because of what he said, then the gift, the promise being for you, that he fills you with his Holy Spirit now, simply. And as I pray, or when I ask that, I agree that it is so, like that is it. And you know, he said, when you ask me for anything, believe you have received it, not that you will receive it. So if you expect that as soon as I finish that, you will start speaking in tongues, not because you are you are you have fallen down and so you are rolling. No, not because of that, but whatever comes out, he he will, he's the one supplying it. And if you are ready, if you are willing, let's do that now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your solid promise that if we ask you and this gift you have already given us. So Lord, I thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the gift of being baptized in the spirit and speaking in tongues according to your word. I ask you that my sister, my sisters, whoever is reaching out to you on this matter right now. In the name of Jesus, today is the day right now they speak in tongues. They have received it. And now in Jesus' name, wherever they are, they begin to speak it. Not because the Holy Spirit speaks it on their behalf, but they begin to speak as you will supply the words. It will just be words they speak. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. And so, wherever you are, whether loudly or softly, it's up to you. But just as you would do it for a baby, you just begin to speak. If I put a baby in your arms and you need that, you just start, that is it, you just start. You just start, just pray. You just speak, speak. Whatever comes out of your mouth has come out. You're just speaking, just speaking. Whether it's one syllable, it's two, it's 500, it doesn't matter. It's not up to you. Just talk, just talk, just talk, just talk. Keep talking, keep talking, keep talking, keep talking, keep talking in the spirit, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my father, in Jesus' name, amen. Glory be to God. Thank you so much. Thank you.
so much. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Oh, there was a hand up, but I lost. Yeah, it, it was me. <laughs> Our dear sister have said it all. I wanted to give my testimony concerning speaking in tongues. Yes. So um, literally, I came from a Muslim background. So far, I'm the one saved. But I believe the Lord will save the rest of my family. Um, I wasn't sleeping. I was at church and we were praying and uh, I had um, an open vision where the Lord took me to John 3, 5. I didn't know what it was. So I said, like, okay, this is what I saw. I saw John 3, 5. So I read, and no one will enter the kingdom of God unless they are baptized in water in the Holy Spirit. So that began a journey for me. So through the journey, one of the things I was, I was supposed to do, he said, I'll do the baptism just as symbolic, but I think one of the means through which one can receive the gifts is when um, those who speak in tongues laid hand on the one who is not speaking and they pray for them. So I was in a group of people. Yes, they laid hand on us and they prayed and I resisted. I was adamant to speak it. In my mind, I was questioning, hey, what if I am insulting God? What kind of language at all will I speak and I don't understand what I am saying? I refused to speak it, not because it was, you could see I was fighting it. I was fighting for it not to come forth from my mouth. So they didn't know. I went home, I showered, my normal routine, I took some 91, going to bed, I read it, just about ending it. Sisters, my tongue switch. A switch and I had no control of the movement of my lips. Like the way I talk and I pause and I, I have command over it. I have no control. My, I was, I, I was doubting but the Holy Spirit took over and I spoke in tongues for close to three hours. I cried, I laughed. I, I didn't know how to explain it. I thought I cried because I wept because I was feeling guilty for, for resisting it, doubting it. You know, I wept, I, I laughed because it was so beautifully, you know, there was just something just going on within my body that I couldn't explain that night. So. Bradley said, as my dear sister said it, just allow the Lord to do his work. It doesn't really matter how you started what you say. Just believe that the Lord is at work and just allow him to flow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Mary, for sharing that. God bless you. As a dear mother of mine would say, allow the Holy Spirit to feel free in you, okay? <laughs> allow God to feel free in you. So also for the sister who says that whenever she's praying, she feels the presence of God so strongly and you feel like running away. That is your, that is your natural habitat. In fact, that is where you are meant to be. That is our dwelling place. That is, we, we, you should be at home there because in that place, that is the everlasting life that Father was talking about. When he says that when we believe, we, do not perish, uh, we should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's a place of living the God kind of life where you are daily in the presence of God. You dwell in him. You dwell in the secret place. You abide under the shadow. It's not an on and off thing. You know, like, oh, I'm going to a place of prayer. And then I come out of his presence. But I am daily there. I'm daily there. And I believe that God is calling you to that place of intimacy, that place of fellowship, where he's actually present with you. He's, he's always there with you anyway. But this is what we call the manifest presence of God, where he wants to reveal himself to you in a deeper way, in an intimate way. It is such a blessing. Please don't run away from the presence of God. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. Auntie Fifi, it's over to you. 
<laughs> Thank you, Super <laughs> Mario. Thank yeah, it's you. not to master. <laughs> God bless you, Sister Jemima. It is of God that we have had this session tonight, and I bless his name. He is able to speak through any of us. However, we, I mean, so long as we are willing, so long as we are willing. God bless you so much. God bless each and every sister. The ones who have shared a question here, a question there, seeking to know more of God's truth. It is a blessing. It's a blessing. Sister Mariam, God bless you for sharing, testifying of God's work and the grace of God that is manifest to us. It's, it's wonderful. It's amazing. It's a blessing. You know, and I know that it encourages us because the journeys are similar but different. So wonderful. At the end of the day, like salvation, Yes, we all came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But somebody met an angel, something, fire, something. Somebody fell down from a horse. Somebody was standing in church and they just came to the front and said they prayed nothing. They did not see nothing, no hear nothing. But all are equally saved. That's just the glory of God and the grace of God. So that none of us will put our hopes in anything else but believing what he has said just believe what he has said you know and it is true the the laying on of hands is one of the means by which we are enabled god is good though. he has different options to help us so if that is something that you feel oh that will help me like but i'm telling you when the laying on of hands is done don't expect that you know you how do i call it like you don't, you don't, you don't do the speaking. You will do the speaking. You see the way Sister Mariam was saying in the prayer time, she resisted. She refused to speak. She refused to speak. Not because the utterance was not given. The utterance is always given. But sometimes due to fear, challenge, da da da, the, the questions, and dun, 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 the lack of clarity, we don't speak. But tonight, I trust God that someone has spoken. And I would encourage you to keep speaking. If you need laying on of hands, because that's how your faith will be released on this matter, please, you can freely arrange for it, whether at your church, your own husband can lay hands on you yourself, you can lay hands on yourself, you can come to the retreats and let us lay hands on you. It's, it's, you see, God is, is with you wherever and however, just, just like the woman with the issue of blood said. You see, it was not Jesus who said, come and hold my garment too. She said, if I touch, the moment I touch his garment, that's it, I know I'm healed. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. She said, she believed. That's why Jesus said that, daughter, your faith, your faith what has made you whole. You believed that when you touch my garment, you'll be made whole and you received it. So if for you, you believe that when Osofu places his hands on you or when her hands are laid on you, or you, you understand, if that, because it is scriptural, that by the laying on of hands, that grace is also made manifest. Make that arrangement like the woman with the issue of blood made her arrangement. She went through to go and get it, you to go through and go and get it. Understanding that is not the only route. Not everybody received it by the touching of the garment and not everyone received it by the laying on of hands. It is all various options. I just want to encourage you that it belongs to all of us. So whether the laying off of hands is what, 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 your, what you believe for, or you can believe his word, the word that just says, ask and you shall receive. Then, then you, you, that one to Charlie, go straight ahead. Don't let anything hold you back. Just go for he is here to help us. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Jemima. I was able to hear, listen to only a part of it, but I know that the Lord has spoken through you and has encouraged us greatly so that all of us can come to greater intimacy, 
come closer to God. He's a person. That is something that for me was difficult to relate with. But he is a person. Person, power person, actual person, actual person. So that all these, my rituals of, you know, this and that, this is how I do it. And I start this way and I end this way. That's not how you deal with a person. And so he wants us to really want to be with him, to admire him, to love him, to hear from him, to believe what he says and to do what he says. Can we take a moment and just pray? Thank God for tonight. Thank God for his, the ministry through the spirit of God. Oh, Thank you, Anna, is your hand up? So, yes, please. So oh. our sister who shared, who asked oh. the question says that, glory be to God, she is speaking in tongues. <laughs> After the prayer, she has started speaking in tongues. Oh, glory to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is good. He is good. He is good. He is true. He is true. 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 Glory to Jesus. Thank you for saying that. Hallelujah. Sisters, we want to just thank God. He is good. Just thank him. Thank him. And whatever it is, you need to tell him because you've heard what he's told you. You know what he's spoken to you. Give him thanks for it. And respond to him, knowing he's a person and he's waiting to hear your feedback, your response to what he has said. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory to Jesus. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Blessed be Jesus. Oh, faithful one. Ah, hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your word is sure. Your word is settled. It is as you say it is. It is as you say it is. Yes, your word is final. Your word is true. Thank you, God, for teaching us. Thank you, God, for helping us. Thank you, God, for giving us eternal life. Life beyond the boundaries of anything that has ever been seen, known, heard of, because it's the life of God now. Thank you, Father, that you make us children of God. Thank you for this beautiful evening. Thank you so much for each of my sisters, blessed daughters of God, filled with the spirit, testifying of your grace, reaching out for more of you, desiring you with every, every cell of their being because you have grown that desire in them. Thank you for your wonderful, powerful work in each one. Thank you for Sister Jemima. Thank you, God, for your grace upon her life and her own Jenny, also learning as simply as each one of us is learning. Just all of us manifesting that it is God we need. God does through anybody who is willing and available. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor for you are true and you are the living God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Sisters, God bless you. Uh -huh. Sister Bridget. She said, Edino Crammy, who said me, Sister Bridget. Um, it's a hallelujah night. Oh. It's a hallelujah night. <laughs> hallelujah night, Ankasa. Glory to Jesus. Okay. Uh, we, 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 we,